Welcome to Devoted Ministry Sunday afternoon worship service. So glad you could join us. I hope you're here. Or if you're viewing this on a different day, different time of uh, this particular day, God bless you anyway. We're happy to have you. Um, we're in a different location today, visiting family in Boston, Massachusetts. So a couple of things I want to share with you up front. Gisela will be joining me momentarily. Um, we don't have any amplification today. That's fine for just my speaking voice. But for our music, um, our music might be a little bit low today. I hope it works out well with these newfangled uh, phones, you know, the, the microphones in these phones, these telephones. It should be okay. But anyway, just wanted you to know that we're going forward with our service one way or the other. Um, with or without amplification, one location or another. I hope the lighting's well. Uh, we're happy to be here praising the Lord on this glorious but cold and chilly and rainy <laughs> Boston, Massachusetts Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon now. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started with our service. I'm glad you're here. I'm going to pray. Father, thank you this morning. You're with us. You are with your people. You've always been and you shall always be. Jesus, you said that. You said, Lo, I'm with you even until the end of the age. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us so that we can boldly say the Lord is our helper. Yes, you are. And we praise you and give you glory as we enter into our service. Lord, be glorified. Help us to praise you. Be praised in the music. Be praised in the sermon. Be praised in our prayers. Be praised in everything we say and do. Let our worship ascend unto thee. Bless those who view us, who share with us, and you be glorified in Jesus' name. So let's go ahead and start with some music. I'm going to share the first song uh, alone. As I said, Gisela will be joining us. For those of you who are just uh, signing on, we're in Boston, Massachusetts uh, this Sunday. We're visiting family. So here we go. Um, a wonderful hymn. I've never actually uh, sung this hymn alone. I don't know if I've ever sung it at all. But um, praise the Lord. Be Come thou fount of every blessing. If you know it, sing along with me, okay, as I sing it. Hey, yeah, 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 yes. Jesus is the fount of every blessing. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing calls for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Hallelujah, yes Hallelujah, isn't Jesus wonderful? Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me while a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he who rescued me from danger interposed his precious blood yes praise you Jesus sing this last verse with me if you know it oh to grace how great a debtor dearly I'm constrained to be let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy course above. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Listen, Jesus loves you. He loves us. We are his people. And he wants us to serve him and be blessed. So I believe Giselle is joining me now. She's got two songs she's going to share with you. Um, so welcome, honey. Good, Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Glad to have you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please excuse also the glare. I'm sure there's glare from our eyeglasses. The, the lighting here is, is bright. So as I said, we're in a different location, but that's okay. We're moving forward in the worship of God. We're excited. Yes. About Jesus. Yes, yes, we are. I Absolutely. love the Lord today. Can I kiss you on the cheek? I just, <laughs> want, I just wanted to. No. Anyway, you go ahead and introduce your two songs. I want to step on your left here. And um, the first one is We Have Come Into This House. And yes. you just click play and you're all set. Yes. It's clicking right in the middle of the screen. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. Worship with me. Thank you, Lord. We love to gather with the people of God, even though you're not here um, in body. You're here in spirit, so just sing along and just worship the Lord this morning. <clears throat> mm, Lord, we love you. <clears throat> to this house gathered in his name to worship him we have come into this house gathered in his name to worship him We have come into this house, gathered in his name, to worship Christ our Lord. Oh, worship him, worship Christ our Lord. We have come into this house and we're gathered in his name to worship him. Come on and worship with me. We have come into this house and we're gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house and we're gathered in his name to worship Christ our Lord. Oh, worship him. Worship Christ our Lord. Come on, he desires your worship today. Mm -hmm. So forget about yourselves and concentrate on him and worship him. If you can, just stop what you're doing and oh, forget about yourselves and concentrate on him and worship Him. So forget about yourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Christ. Worship Christ the Lord. Oh, worship Him. Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Let us come on and lift up those holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. Come on, if you can, lift up those holy hands. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. And magnify his name and worship Christ our Lord. Oh, worship him, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come on, wherever you are, worship him. Oh, worship Worship him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He desires your worship. Oh, worship him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes, we love to worship the Lord. You are awesome, God. We love to worship you because you are awesome. No one like you, God. What a wonderful Savior, wonderful Lord we serve. Thank you for, to those who are joining us right now. I wonder if you would join me in just telling the Lord that you love him. This is a love song to God. We tell others that we love them and how much we appreciate them. But how often do we tell God, Lord, I just love you today. Things don't have to be going right. Everything don't have to be going your way. But you can still love him. You can still tell him. He loves you no matter what. So just tell him you love him today. Mm -hmm. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, hallelujah. In what you hear And let it be a sweet, sweet sound In your ears I love you, Lord, yes I do And I lift my voice To worship you, oh my soul. Soul, rejoice. No matter what's going on, rejoice. Take joy, my King. In what you hear. And let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ears, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, oh Lord. We I 
love you, Lord. Sing it with me. Tell him you love him today. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, yes, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. We exalt thee, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, oh While this music is playing, give God praise this yes. morning. This is a service. We're not entertaining. I know it's just Gisela and me, <laughs> but we're in service, and we yes. mean this song. We exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Lord, you alone are God. There is no other God beside you. Yes, Jehovah none. is God, and you are his son, Emmanuel, and you're one. Yes. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And we want to give Lord. you glory. We want you to be praised. We want you to be worshipped. Yes. And I ask that you bless your people, even yes, as they God. worship this morning. Yes, Lord. As you, as Gisela continues to sing, lift your hands where you are. Yes. Lift your voice with her. Lift your heart. Close mm -hmm. your eyes. Give God praise. Bless his name. Go ahead. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Jesus, oh Lord, come on and worship the Lord with me today, worship the Lord, this is where you just say anything you want to God, just say anything, how you feel, what it means to you, oh Lord, you're worthy, oh Lord, you're awesome, yes you are, and I love you today. Oh, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, oh Lord, we Praise you, Jesus. I want to ask you a question this morning. This is something that the Lord has just put on my heart. And we're gonna, you're gonna do some more worshiping and some more, we're gonna do some praying. But I want to ask you a question. Is are you angry with God this morning? Is somebody angry with the Lord this morning? I, I'm gonna tell you something. Gisela and I know how that feels. There are things that can happen in your life. And you want God to change them. You want God to fix them. You want God to stop them. And sometimes when God doesn't move the way that we would prefer for him to move. And, and, and we prefer it for obvious reasons. If, and this may sound comical, but I'm, I'm serious. If there was a dagger sticking in your chest... You would want me to remove it. It's very painful. Take this thing out. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we want God to move. God, this hurts. 
Take it out! Move this! Stop this! Change this! Fix this! And we can become angry with God. But I want you to do something. Something that Giselle and I have done many times. I want to challenge you. Sometimes we've had to confess and we've had to pray and, and, and just force ourselves to worship God and praise Him and tell Him how much we love Him. Yes. And I want you to do that this morning. God is going to bless you. Tell Him how much you love Him. No strings attached. Give Him praise. Worship Him with a dagger in your chest, if I can stay with that analogy. Go ahead, honey. Yes. Yes, you know what it is that you're going through, that you've been praying for God to change or remove or to fix. You know what that is. And at times you've become discouraged and wonder, wondered if God even cared. Wondered if he even really loved you. Because you say, God, you know I'm in pain. You know this is hurting me. If you love me, if you care, why don't you take care of it? But you know what? We don't understand everything about God. All we know is that He loves us and that He does care because He said it in His Word. We don't understand why He allows certain things when He can change them. But you know what? God is sovereign. And God is God. And I, I remember someone once said, let God be God. He was going through a hard time. A time that he, he didn't understand. Some situations that he was going through. Nothing he did. But you know what he said? He said, let God be God. And let me be me. And that means that because God is God, we're not going to understand everything. Because we are we, we're going to say, God, why? But you know what? I have taken those word with me, words with me through a lot of situations. And I said, God, you are God. You are God and I am me. And I don't understand everything. But you know what? I have learned to worship. And yes, it was a, it was a learning process. It didn't happen overnight. I had to learn to worship no matter what. I had to learn to lift my hands no matter what and say, we exalt thee. Make it personal right now and say, I. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Sing it through the pain. Oh. right here we're not um we're not done with this the holy spirit is speaking to somebody mm. and while you were talking i heard i heard somebody's heart i heard somebody's thoughts and this is all impromptu okay um we're gonna say what what the holy spirit gives us to say but i heard somebody saying well why should i why should I worship God? I mean, what difference does it make? Um, why should I force myself to worship God, as you say? Um, and we're going to answer that. We're going to answer that for you right now. Mm -hmm. Why you should. You want to start? <laughs> we should worship God because, like I said earlier, because He's God and He's sovereign. And we don't understand all of his ways. The Bible says his ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So if we just worship God when everything is going well, when everything is going the way we want it to, when there are no daggers in our, in our chest, when, there's, when everything is happening and occurring the way that we prefer, if we just worship God during those situations, then what, what does it matter? We worship God because He is God. Okay, I have a question Regardless. for you. Why did you do it? Because I loved Him. I loved God and I knew that 
See, there was a situation that I was going through years ago. And the Holy Spirit convicted me because of worshiping God and thanking Him and praising Him only when I was feeling great. Only when things were going my way. And when I was going through that particular situation, the Holy Spirit convicted me and said, you only worship me when, you, when your life is going the way you want it to. What about when it's not? I'm still God. I'm still worthy. I'm still your father. Just like David said, David was going through, and I say this all the time because it means so much to me. It's a great reminder to me. When David was going through a rough time in his life, and he said, he, he began to ask God, God, why are you, and I'm paraphrasing, why are you, you, why are you allowing these things to take place? Why? And he said more than that. But at the end of the chapter, and I believe it's Psalm 21, I'm going to look it up. Um, he said, but you know what? I will worship. I will worship. Why? Because God has been good to me. And that's why I worship. Because God has been good to me. And he said he has been good to me. He remembered that God brought him through those things in the, in the past. And he, and he knew that God would bring him through the present situation. And that's what we have to believe. And you know what? Even if he doesn't. Even if he allows whatever you're going through to continue. He is still God. Okay, I have another question for you. This is not my question. This is somebody's question. So, what's in it for me? If I force myself to worship God, as you described, what's in it for me? Why? why? Well, when I worship God, it when we worship God, it number one, it gives Him pleasure. He is God. He's our Father. And number two, when we worship, we let him know, God, you are still worthy, regardless of what I'm going through, you are still worthy. And number three, it gives us peace. When I worship God in the midst of a situation, it gives me peace in it. It settles my heart, it settles my mind, and it gives me peace. And it lets God know, Lord, I worship you regardless, and I love you no matter what. Worship is an act of faith, and God cannot resist faith. God cannot deny faith. God, if I can use this phrase, God cannot withstand faith. That's why when the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, he stopped in the middle of that huge crowd, that, that huge throng of people, rubbing up against him and bumping into him and knocking him about and I'm sure there was great commotion and noise but when that woman touched him she her faith touched him her fingertips touched his clothing the very hem of his, of his clothing you can't <laughs> if somebody touched my coat and my coat is very close to my body there's no way I would feel that Jesus was in a flowing garment with a throng of people. He did not feel the touch of his hand, of her hand, upon the hem of his clothing. But her faith reached him. Her faith touched him. And he knew instantly, somebody has touched me. Master, what are you talking about? Somebody touched you. Everybody's touching. No, I'm telling you, somebody has touched me. Not my clothes, me, my heart, my spirit. Worship is an act of faith, and faith touches God. Faith moves God. God will respond to you when you worship him. Yes, now, he, yes. go ahead. he may not always mm -hmm. or immediately take away the thing that you're going through, exactly. but he will give you the strength. To go through it. And he's going to bless you. There's no way that you're going to worship yes. God and he's not going to bless you. That's not possible. Mm -hmm. 
That's not going to happen. You're not going to worship God. You're not going to believe him and, and he ignore you. That won't happen. So we're done with this. I'm going to go ahead with the word of God. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit wanted, that was for somebody yes. this, this afternoon. So you go ahead and pray for the word and then mm -hmm. I'll start. Thank you, Lord, for the word that will go forth. We have faith right now, Lord, that um, the words that will be spoken are the words that you have given to Ed, um, Pastor Edmund from your heart. We need a word from you, Lord, a word that will strengthen us, that will change us, that will renew us, because that's what your word does. That's what your word does. It changes us, Lord. Thank you for your word that will go forth. Bless um, Pastor Edmund right now, Lord. Give him the strength that he needs. Touch his mind. That the, the thoughts will flow freely. And they will discern what is from you and what is from himself. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's go ahead and get right into the word of God. I'm going to need that, okay? Um, that's okay. Um, let me see if I can get it back. Don't worry. And I'm going to ask you to move that because that's unsteady and I don't want any accidents. Bear with us. We just had a little mistake here. Give me a moment just to search for something, please. Bear with me. Okay. Okay, I can't find it. I need Jude, uh, in the, in the, Jude 3 and 4 in the NIV, please. But thank you. So let's go ahead with the Word of God. If you saw my post <clears throat> earlier, um, we're in the book of Jude, the letter of Jude today. Um, and for those of you who have joined us after the fact, we are in Boston, Massachusetts on a cold and rainy June uh, afternoon. Strange summers here in, in the north. <laughs> I'm going back to Florida as soon as I can, but <laughs> thank you so much. Anyway, uh, I was actually born and raised here, but I'm not used to this anymore. So let's go ahead and get into the word of God. All right. Verse, I'm going to start at verse 1, but we're paying attention mostly to verses 3 and 4. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called. Mercy unto you, and grace, I'm sorry, and peace, and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I would like to read that verse 3 and 4 again in the NIV. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write, to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I give God praise for his word. This is what the Lord has said today. Hmm. Contend for the faith. First of all, this is not talking about your personal faith. Your worship, uh, 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 and, uh, your belief in God, as I described a few minutes ago. The, um, <clears throat> the fact that you believe God. That's your personal faith. 
This is talking about the faith that was delivered to us, the doctrine of our salvation. Our doctrine of salvation, and I'm not talking about any particular uh, particular denominational doctrine. I'm not talking about Baptist, Lutheran, um, Episcopalian. I'm not talking about Catholic. I'm not talking about any particular church faith, Nazarene, um, you, you name it, uh, apostolic holiness. I'm not talking about that kind of doctrine. Because everybody's got their own various interpretations and nuances and this and that and adding this and taking that out and changing those words. I'm talking about the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ that was delivered to us, says entrusted to us as God's people. The doctrine of God the Father, Jehovah being the one True God, the only God there is. Paul said there, there are actually no other gods. He said there are many that are called gods. But there are no gods actually. Except God himself. The Lord God, Jehovah. That's our faith. That's our doctrine. He has a son. He sent into the world to be a man. Emmanuel. God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. They are one. Jesus is both fully man and fully God. 100% on each side. Amen. <laughs> uh, and the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead, equal to the Father and the Son. Third person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is God as well. That's our doctrine. That's our faith. God created man. He created all things. You read it in Genesis, Genesis 1 and 2. He made man from the dust of the ground. He put man to sleep, took a rib from man's side and made a woman and made her his wife, made them one. Said, for this cause, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave or cling to his wife. And they which were two shall now be one flesh, one person before God. Not that God doesn't see me as an individual and Gisela as an individual. That's not what it means. <clears throat> it's not that he doesn't. we are not two souls before God. But we are one in unity, in marriage, we are one representing the one ship, if you will. I don't know if I just made up a word, but anyway, the one ship of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Husband and wife is based on that. The relationship is based on that. We are, in fact, called the bride of Christ. The church is. That's our doctrine. That's our faith. One God, one Father of all, one Lord, one baptism, one Holy Spirit who is in us all. Jesus Christ, fully man, fully God. A marriage is between one man and one woman and they are one as God and his son are one. As Jesus and his Christ are united. Praise God. That's our faith. That's our doctrine. That was delivered to us, entrusted to us. Father is the head of the house, head of the family, as Christ is the head of the church. Husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church and did what? Gave himself for it. Husbands, you are to give yourselves for your wives. How did Christ give himself for the church? He died for the church. Husbands, we are to die for our wives. Now, I've said this before. This is in Ephesians 5. This is the doctrine. This is our faith. It was entrusted to us. So, I, I, it's not likely that I will ever have occasion to physically die for Gisela. It's not likely that I will ever have the occasion to stand in her stead and say, that's all right. Let her go free. Take my life instead. So what is Jesus talking to us about when he says, Husbands, you love your wives as I love the church and gave myself for her, meaning I died for her. 
Jesus gave up everything for the good of his bride. We husbands are to die to self, die to the flesh. It doesn't mean I can't. When I say give up everything for the good of, I'm not talking about, okay, let's see. Um, I like vanilla ice cream and Gis Gisela likes ice cream with all kinds of stuff in it. <laughs> she does. That's not my preference with all kinds of candies in it and this and that and chocolate in it. <laughs> That's not my preference. That doesn't mean that every time we eat ice cream together, I've got to have that and say, no, nope, no, nope, I'm not having vanilla. I'm going to suffer for my wife. I'm going to die. Boy, what kind of suffering is that? Eating ice cream. <laughs> I'm going to suffer and have this ice cream with everything in it. I'm not talking about I give up everything I like and prefer. When I say die... For my wife, it means this. It is up to me. I've been called as the head of my family, the head of my home, and the head of my wife to crucify my flesh. Now, I'm to crucify my flesh anyway because even if I'm an unmarried man, I am to crucify the flesh daily, mortify the deeds of the flesh daily as a child of God. But I'm talking about in terms of marriage, I am to take the brunt of the sacrifices and stand in the gap for the family. And if the fa listen, if the family is spiritually sick, I am to stand in the gap and say, Lord, I'm standing right now for my wife, for my family, and I'm taking responsibility. I'm going to give up my, I'm, I'm going to fast and pray. I'm going to take charge. I'm going to lead the way. I'm going to seek the face of God. I'm going to make sure that my family is worshiping you and serving you. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, not his wife. He said that. That's what Adam didn't do. Adam didn't take the leadership role and say, Eve, we're not doing this. Okay, you, you ate it? You ate it already? Because the scripture says she ate and then gave to Adam. What Adam should have said is, you have done a foolish thing. I don't know what God is going to do with you. I don't know how he's going to deal with you. But I'm telling you that me and our boys, we're not eating that fruit. And we're not going to touch it. And we're going to obey God. That's what Adam should have done. Husbands, that's your job. That's your job. Take a stand. Serve the Lord. That's what Jesus did for the church. He took a stand and he served his God. He served his father. He obeyed his father for the sake of his bride. Father, I want differently, but for the sake of the bride. I'm going to say yes to you and no to myself. Let me move forward because that's a sermon in and of itself. And I, I've spent longer on that already than I intended to. But praise the Lord. Talking about the faith. Contending for the faith. Holding on to the doctrine that was delivered to us. That was entrusted to us by the Lord God. One man, one woman in marriage. United, one flesh before God. Boys and girls for children. There are only two genders, only two sexes. Boys and girls. That's the faith. That's the doctrine that was delivered to us that we must contend for. Praise God. Wives, you are to, what's the word the scripture gives us? Reverence your husbands. Respect the man of God in your house, in your life. Husbands, in order for, us to re for her to respect the man of God in her life and in her house, she's got to have a man of God in her life and in her house. Wives, reverence the man of God. He is standing in the place of Christ. The Bible says that. As Christ is the head of the church, so is the husband the head of the wife. That's the doctrine. That's the faith that was delivered unto us that we must contend for. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. 
Obey them. It's right. It's what God wants. It's what he said to do. And it's also the first commandment with promise. He made promises connected to it. You are to obey your parents, children. That's the faith that we are to contend for. The doctrine that we are to contend for. And if they don't obey parents, you are to see to it that they, they obey. Father, you're the head of the family. Now, there are wise ways to get that done. We're not going there down that rabbit trail. I don't have time. I didn't say knock them up against the wall and punch them in the nose. I didn't say that. I said you are responsible, fathers and mothers. You are responsible to unite with the husband as the head of the family and see to it that the children obey you in the Lord because it's right. And God told you to bring them up in fear and admonition. And he'll take care of what happens when they get old. He said they won't depart from it. Praise God. But what is going on here? Scripture said that deceitful people, the King James says men, NIV says people have crept in unawares. They weren't unaware. God was aware of it. But church, we allowed it. And this is, this is Jew talking, oh man, uh, more, than, more than a thousand years ago. He said it had happened, it had already started back then. I would venture to say more so now. They are in the church and they appear to be the people of God, but they are perverting the faith. They are perverting the doctrine that was delivered unto us. And the one thing that they have extremely perverted that I preach about all the time is grace. There are those who are teaching that because of grace, we have a license to sin and to indulge the flesh and to indulge our filthy lusts. And I'm not just talking about sexual lust, even though I include that. We're being taught that because of grace, because God loves us so much, I don't have to live a holy life. Because God loves us so much, we don't have to seek righteousness. We don't have to be holy as he is holy. We don't have to stand on the gospel the way it was presented to us in the word of God. Grace. I said this before in one of my messages recently. Grace, hallelujah. How did I say that? Grace is not a license. It's a gift. It's a blessing. It's a privilege. It, it's a gift. Grace is not a license. Grace doesn't say to me, oh good, oh good. I can go right ahead and, and, and listen. Let's just, let me just go there, okay? And I'm not going to cover everything, but let the Holy Spirit speak to you about you. Grace doesn't say to me, oh goody. Uh, so because of grace, you know, God forgives. All I have to do is confess my sins and, and you know, God is okay with me. So I can go ahead and, and enjoy pornography. I'm under grace. I can go ahead and, and mistreat my wife. I'm under grace. I can go ahead and lust. I'm under grace. I don't have to be a preacher like those old preachers who tried to walk a straight line before God. I don't have to be like Abraham was when God said, Abraham, walk before me, even though Abraham was already 99 years old. I'm not under the threat that Sodom and Gomorrah were under. I'm under grace. That's what those uh, who have crept into the church unawares are teaching us. Grace takes care of it all. That's what they're saying. But let me tell you what grace really means. Let me tell you what grace really is. Grace is this. God loved us so much, he made a way. He made a way for me to be free. So that I don't even have to consider indulging my flesh. I can, I can stand up 
strong, tall and strong. And I'm not very tall in stature physically, but in spirit, I'm a giant. I can stand up a giant and deny my flesh and say, absolutely not. That would not please God and I am not going to do it. That would not please God and I'm not going to think it. That would not please God and I'm not going to say it. Absolutely not. I will not yield my members to sin. I will not use my eyes to sin. That would displease God. I'm under grace. That means I have the power. Jesus said, I have given you power. And I can do it. I can say no. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because I'm under grace. Because grace came and made a way for that to happen. The grace of God. That's the grace that Jesus was talking to Paul about when he spoke to him and said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace can do the job. I know it's pressing in on you, Paul, but my grace can do the job. I know it's pressing in on you, Paul, but my grace can give you strength. I'm, my strength is perfect in your weakness. So when you would buckle under, when you would get so weak that I can't take it anymore, that I'm being tempted and I'm just going to go with it because I just can't deal with it anymore, the grace of God that was delivered to us stands up in us if that's what we want. It says, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to walk in the holiness of God. I'm going to live in the holiness of God. And I'm not going to do what my flesh is crying out for me to do. I have the power to do that. Jesus has given me the power to do that. I didn't have that power before. Jesus has given it. Now, I'm almost done. I'm finishing. Let's talk about this contending for the faith. Honey, do you still have that NIV version open there? I want to see that. It says, there's some wording there I want. It says, for certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people. There are, listen, there are ungodly pastors. There are ungodly worship leaders in the church. There are ungodly um um, singers. There are ungodly musicians. There are ungodly people in leadership positions in the church who pervert the grace of our God in a license for immorality. That's what I've been talking about. They are teaching you that you are licensed now because of grace to indulge your flesh if need be. Let me tell you this one. I've heard this one. I've heard Christian people say this. Okay? And I'm just going with, listen, I don't care. I'm going to preach. I've heard Christian people say, oh, pornography is all right. Pornography is better, actually. In other words, if you need it, it's be God would prefer that rather than you go out and sleep with someone you're not married to. Why don't you just indulge yourself in pornography uh, okay, so that you can still gain sexual gratification, but you won't commit the big sin. That is a perversion of grace. And it is not so. It is a lie that the devil has put into the mouths of some of God's people and they have accepted it because they want that. Because it's easier, it feels better to the flesh. It's easier to go that way than to stand there, like I said, in the power of God and say, absolutely not. I am going to worship Jesus like Gisela was talking about earlier with this dagger hanging out of my chest and I don't understand anything about it. I don't understand why you're not do helping me, God. I don't understand why you won't move it, change it, fix it. I don't understand any of it. But I tell you this, I'm going to stand in the power and in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to stand in the faith that was delivered unto me and I will worship my God. God, grace gave me that. Grace gave me that. Praise God. They have perverted the grace of God 
making it a license for immorality. And listen, they even deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign Lord. In other words, they are saying that there are other ways to God. People in the church are saying that. I had a conversation last week with a Christian brother who's a musician on the worship team. And I won't go into the conversation, but it was 100% anti-Christ and anti-biblical. And we weren't arguing. <laughs> We're friends. I was shocked to hear his position. In my mind, I was like, what? You believe that? I had no idea. I couldn't believe it. Wait a minute. What are you, you're, huh? How are you saved? And you believe that? I, I'm lost. I'm so confused. That's because those pervert, those, those ungodly men and women, mostly men, have slipped into the church and, de and, and the spirit of deception has deceived the people of God. And they are teaching and perverting the grace of God and denying the very lordship of Christ. I'm done. It's 12 o'clock just about. I'm going to stop. But I'm going to finish with this. So Jude in his letter started off by saying, I wanted to write to you about something else, but I felt compelled to write to you that to tell you, listen, contend for the faith. Contend means fight. Fight. If Jude needed to write that back in, I don't know what century this was. I have to look at it. That was the, obviously in the, within the first century. Let's put it that way. If Jude needed to write that, Within the first century, after the death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, we need this letter today. Let me say this, I don't want to miss this, this just came to my mind. Another form of this perversion is that the word of God, I preached this last week and I'm going to keep preaching it, that the word of God is not enough. We need other the word of God is not, it doesn't stand alone. It's not necessarily the inerrant word of God. That's what we're being taught. We need other books and we need the books and the com commentaries and we need, uh, uh, we, we need science and we need, um, uh, I can't think of the word. We need apologetics. And I'm not going into that. Uh, you listened to my message last Sunday, but that's part of this lie and this perversion. Saints of God, it's time to contend for the faith that was delivered unto us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Fight, fight, fight. First person I'm supposed to fight is me. Fight yourself. Fight yourself. Get yourself in the word of God. Dig deep and stay in it like you are a dying man or woman because without it actually that's what we are eat this word take it in read it day and night read it read it study it meditate on it think about it dream about it I'm telling you this is the faith right here and the first step is to take it in if I don't have this how am I cont what am I contending for that's like when you, when you get your PhD, they call it, when you write your thesis, they say you have to defend your dissertation. That's, what they, that's the term. And once you, once you defend your dissertation successfully, you are then accredited with that PhD. But if you don't have a dissertation, what are you going to defend? If I don't have this, first of all, what am I going to contend for? It's my thoughts, somebody else's thoughts, some commentary, something in a book, of, uh, you know, some book? No, first, I've got to have the word of God for myself. Step two, fight yourself. The devil is going to come to you through you 
first. He's going to attack you through your own mind first. He's going to come first by bringing thoughts to your own mind. You've got to be resistant to the devil within you first. And when I say within you, I don't mean you're possessed. I'm saying when he comes to you, fight him in you. When your flesh rises up, fight your own flesh. And then contend for the faith in the world. God bless you, sweetheart. Please come and take us on out. Thank you, um, Pastor Edmund, for that word, reminding us to fight for faith. It's so funny. We fight for a lot of things in life. We fight for uh, relationships. We fight for our families. We fight for our jobs. We fight um, to get in line first on Black Friday. We fight for a lot of things. We fight for those things that are important to us. That's, those are the things we fight for. If it's not important, we're not going to fight for it. We're not going to bother. Now, if the Word of God is not... If you're not fighting for the Word of God, if it's not important to you, then you're not going to fight for it. So it's either you don't understand the importance of the Word of God, and that's why you're not fighting for it, or it's not important enough to you. And I'm speaking to myself as well. I'm always speaking to myself. I'm always checking myself. I'm always watching myself. So I'm not speaking at you. It's for all of us. Contend, as Pastor Edmund said, fight. It means fight. Fight for it. And so if the Word of God is not important to you, if you find yourself not fighting for your faith, then that's a conversation, a discussion you have to have with God. Why is it? Thank you for that word, Pastor Edmund. That's a reminder to me to fight for my faith, to contend for my faith. I love the Lord today. I love the word of God, and I will continue in it. Thank you, Father, for your word that has gone forth, reminding us that we are to contend for our faith because our faith is the most important thing that we can possess. Thank you, Father, for the hearers. Let them not only be hearers, Lord, but doers of your word. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord, for your word that changes us, that renews our minds, that lifts us up, that reminds us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful week and remember God loves you with an everlasting love that will never fail.